Hello everybody, this is Bud Rich and this is a new video uh, that I want to call Let's make some room for this message because it's so long How to successfully fail and create errors or maybe we should do this even Tput set af color 1 and boink Red text It's an error Okay, we are going to look into uh, Error messages, file descriptors, uh, error notifications, and all kinds of useful things. Um, and I hope this uh, video will will show you some some really interesting stuff. Let's clear this terminal also here. I have prepared a script here, error test. We can just execute that to start with. And error test, it only echoes this string here. This is error test. When you do an echo, you print something to standard out. Standard out, by default, is just printing that to uh, um, the terminal that you executed the command in. But, you know, you can redirect uh, this to a file, uh, tmp error. And now we don't get any output here, instead standard out is redirected to a file. And standard out is actually also a file because remember everything in Unix, Linux or whatever is a file. Also standard in is another file. Well, they are called file descriptors. So standard in is zero, standard out is one, and then we also have standard error, which is two. And just as you can redirect uh, the output to a different file, you can also redirect it to a different file descriptor. So to redirect uh, standard output to standard error, you write it like this. And it's <laughs> this is really hard to explain exactly how these things work. Um, this is a very good answer on, on Stack Overflow describing this. Uh, the operator greater than and two literally means redirect the address of file descriptor one, standard out, to the address of file descriptor 2, standard error, for this command. Um, and yeah, it, it gets really, really complicated when you read about this, how this actually works. And this link also is highly recommended. It's the Bash Hackers wiki, which is a long uh, illustrated wiki here about how these file descriptors work. And it is, it is complicated, but it's very good to at least know a little bit about how this works. And also, when we did this, we redirected to standard error here. It looks just the same as uh, standard out. But it is actually two different things. Um, I think it's easiest to, to, to understand the difference when you pipe a command to a different command. For instance, toilet, you know. Now toilet will make an ASCII uh, uh, representation of that string. But um, let's go back to the script here. If we add this uh, redirection to to uh, standard error here instead, and now when we execute error test uh, pipe it to toilet, we don't get any toilet output because now standard out is empty. And that means the toilet's standard in is also empty because that consists of the standard output of error test here. But we still get the warning because standard error is printed to uh, the default terminal output like this. Um, this means we could do echo string 2. So now we have one string that we send to standard error and one string that we send to standard out. And now if we pipe this to toilet, we get string 2 uh, handled by toilet, but the error is just printed to, to yeah, standard error, the terminal. Great. And in this Stack Overflow uh, answer here, they also recommend that you use um, parentheses around the redirection to standard uh, error to um, avoid interaction with other redirections, use a subshell, and, and I, I think I can recommend this. Another interesting detail here is that the redirection is specified at the beginning of the string. 
uh, like this. Yeah, let's put it in a subshell also. So. This works just as fine. And this is a very interesting thing with bash is that you can um, redirect, um, put the redirection. It doesn't matter if it is at the beginning of the string or not. Now we only have echo string two here. And remember we could do error test pipe that to tmp or, or whatever, like this. This should create a file. Uh, let's see if we can find it. TMP or here we have that string too. But we could also put this redirection to a file before the command TMP or two. There, and now we should have a file called or two here, and that also contains the same thing. Here. And this can be very uh, good to know that you can put the redirection at the uh, beginning of line, it's very useful for example uh, when you create an alias. Uh, you know, aliases cannot take uh, arguments or anything, you can just like continue to write on, a, on an alias, and then you could have. Yeah, it's very useful in that case. And it's something that I don't think uh, everyone knows about that you can put redirections uh, at both places like this. Standard in, standard out, redirect, put in subshell, good. Okay, also added here uh, that it can be nice uh, when you print an error message to, to colorize the output. And to do that you send some strange uh, control characters to, to bash and it will change like, like I did in the video when I changed uh, the cursor here for instance. Now it's the beam, press escape, it's the block. And to achieve that I, I needed to, to print some really strange error messages. These error mess uh, or escape characters. These escape characters can also be be accessed in a more sane way by using the tput uh, command, as I used uh, uh, in the beginning of the video. Tput set af, which I think stands for set foreground color or something, and then we can set it to one uh, is uh, the first color number one, which is usually red. So there, now we get this in, in a red color instead. And uh, we can go on here. Two is green, I think. And three, th this of course, depending on, on your color scheme. You can see this in, in X resources or wherever, wherever you had set this. So you can change colors like this. You can also change background colors and you can change cursors and stuff with this tput uh, command. But if we just want to, to change the color of the string here to, for instance, red, which is a classic, uh, then we could do uh, tput set af1 and echo. Let's do this now. Dollar one here. And remove this. So now if we do error test, and then we can just print hello world. It prints that in red text, two standard errors. So this wouldn't work piping this to toilet, we get nothing, you know. Well, we did. Ah, I guess we redirect only this part here. That, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. Th this this is the w this is the thing. We shouldn't shouldn't use tput like this. We could also put the the output of tput in a variable. Let's call it red is equal to the output of tput set af one. Then instead of doing this, we do echo red. Can also put it like this is good practice here, and then dollar one. So now, error test hello world toilet. We only get the the error message. So this is how we could colorize output also with uh, um, when we print errors. Remember. Uh, 
in, in, in the video, but Ulf, I wanted to, to manage errors here. And here we got the, the issue that we uh, sometimes, probably most of the times, we execute this Ulf script, for instance, with a, a key combination. And we, we don't have any terminal at all, so it doesn't really make any sense to print an error message when we do, cannot see the error message. And then uh, you probably want to use something like notify send instead to, to print the error message or print the message. So notify send and then we can do dollar one here. So now if, we, if I execute this command, let's skip the toilet part here. Now we get hello world standard error and we also get the notification here. Hello world. And this is this is a way to do it to, to just do uh, a duplicate you both printing a notify send and and uh, to standard error like this but it's in, in my my opinion it's really annoying to get duplicate messages and when we are executing it from a terminal it it doesn't make any sense to also print a notification and when we print a notification it doesn't make that much sense to to uh, print an error message and this is something that I've been thinking about, but never just investigated how to do it. Uh, if, if there is some way to, to, to know if we are executing a script from a terminal or not. Uh, and I have actually bound this uh, error test also to a key combination in, in i3. So if I press super shift C here. No. Uh, I have to test that then. Mm. Let's do this, merge, error test, super shift C, that should work. That's weird. Ah, that's right, that's right. We, when I press super shift C, I don't pass an argument here. So let's change this notify send to uh, message instead. Now I can press super shift C and we get the MSG here. And that's the same thing we get here. So sorry for that. So is there a way to, to know if we are executing the script from a terminal or not? And this is one way that have been working, at least in, in this uh, case, when it's a terminal or an i3 key binding, this, this will work. We create this strange test here. If dash t1, then we can say this is from a terminal else notify send you can also add this red here to terminal notify send um, this is from key binding by we could also add this a uh, note notification here so we get a notification at both times this is from term our save execute error test this is from terminal we get the text here we get the notification here i hit super shift c this is from key binding so now it doesn't execute this notification or this error message or anything and this is a great way to, to send errors uh, in different ways, depending on from, from where you execute the script. Another thing that we could do here is notify send. Uh, it takes an uh, option that's called urgency level. Uh, we can see it here really quickly. U, urgency. And then you can specify low, normal or cr critical. And normal is, of course, the normal, so you never have to specify that. Then, then you just don't specify an urgency level, but low and critical, that uh, 
uh, most of the time changes the appearance a bit of the notification. So if we set this to urgency critical here and execute this because this is only from the terminal. This is from terminal. Now we get a red notification here. And another thing is that uh, a critical notification by default in Dunst, uh, it doesn't time out, so you have to close it manually. And if I press the, press the key binding, then we get a normal uh, uh, not notify send here. So it's this can also be good when you send error messages to distinguish that it is really a, 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 a error message and not a notification. And here is my Dunst RC, and here we can see this urgency, low, normal, and critical, and, and the customizations you can do to it. You can change background, foreground, color, and stuff like that, and also the timeout. So it, the colors and stuff, it depends on, on your own settings, and if you are using Dunst at all. But I think this notify send and this urgency critical, it will work for other notifications demons uh, and not just Dunst. But I'm not sure, I haven't tested it. Okay, so with all this now, I also have, uh, you can of course set more colors here, and it's also a good idea to set this normal color uh, after you have uh, printed uh, the string that you want to colorize. We do this to reset to the default foreground. You see now only this part is red and then I set the color to normal which means default foreground color like this. Um, I, I, I think I have a set to default uh, foreground color in my prompt script here so, I, so it, otherwise sometimes I don't know it depending on your settings when, when you add this red color here it might make everything red until you, you execute the tput sgr0 here. Whatever, I have put together a little collection here, or a function I, I, I've created to automatically do this for us. And this function, I will upload it to GitHub, links in the show notes. I will also link uh, the, the, the Stack Overflow uh, answers I have found here and, and this uh, Bash Hackers wiki. Here is, by the way, some more colors and stuff you can do with tput. And here is uh, uh, some information about this dash tfd, which we use to distinguish if it is a, uh, from a terminal or not. This is not 100% foolproof, this uh, t1, but it has worked for me in, in most cases here. It's better than nothing. And worst case is that you get a notification or an error message at the wrong place. It, it, it will not break anything really. So now I have pasted my function here called err. So if we run error test now we shouldn't get anything because we, don't, we, we just declare a function. We have to call this function and I have written the synopsis here. You can execute err here with different options. E for error message, W for warning message, S for success message and then M or no option at all and that will just print the message to standard out and depending on the mess the type uh, you will get uh, uh, let, let, let's start with a warning this is a warning and then now we do error test it doesn't matter this hello world uh, we could remove that now we get a warning here. If I press Super Shift C, we get this notification. Warning, this is a warning. If we change this to success, this is a success. Execute it here. We get success in red, green colors, and then the message, Super Shift C. We get this type of notification. It, it have urgency level low here, and that, in my configuration, it have these colors. And then, you, of course, you have error. This is a success, but it's an error. Notification is red. And there is another difference when you... The error is a bit special because that also exits uh, a script. Uh, if, if you have this function and, and you print an error message, it, it will just terminate the script you're running and also exit with the uh, exit status 1, which means that 
echo hello you see it only prints the error message we don't uh, because and here it means error test if this is true uh, then also do this but this is now false since we exit with one if we would change the the this to warning instead then it will not exit with a false uh, status and we are and we get the hello can be good to know that and it's good practice to add add a exit on on fatal errors like this so that's what was i wanted to show you uh, and as i said i will upload this uh, function to to github i will probably rewrite this and, and uh, perfect it in my own scripts but uh, the thing you get on github is the thing you you, you see in this video and you can you you can configure it yourself uh, it, it's whatever whatever thank you for watching next video we apply this error function to ulf and we also add uh, uh, a screenshot uploading functionality to uh, yeah to ulf and his friends have a great day. Bye.